Hey, Steve from Animatable here. This is one of two videos for people who are completely new to animating characters in After Effects. And we're gonna show you how to do that using Limber Light. In this video, we're just gonna concentrate on how Limber Light works and ways that you can style its limbs to better suit your characters. Limber Light is a free, super slim version of Limber which only has two buttons, one of which just takes you to the full version of Limber, and the other one is called New Bone, and when we click that uh, and click OK, we'll get a new path and stroke-based limb. That's what we call bones, okay? So if you're used to tools like this, then you'll know that what you get is two uh, controller layers, that's these green teardrop shapes, and I can grab these and move them around, and they are set to be guide layers so that they don't render. And then you have the rendering limb layer, which will be called something limb. They're all shape layers, and that limb layer uh, sits at the bottom underneath the two controllers. And you generally, uh, you don't want to parent that to anything or change its position or anything. Uh, what you want to do is take your start controller and parent that to your character's body, okay? Because that will be the hip or the shoulder and then the end controller will be uh, its kind of wrist or ankle. And you can either parent your foot or hand layers to this end controller, or you can parent the end controller to them. Obviously you can't do both. Uh, and there are certain advantages to doing it one way or the other, which is basically to do with whether you, your hands and feet kind of auto rotate along with the limb or not, but we'll show you that in a second. So on the end controller, there's an effect. If you can't see your effect controls panel, just hit E with it selected and double click on the word limber and that'll open your effect controls panel. Uh, and that's where we're gonna look at these different uh, property groups here that are inside this limber effect. So with limber light, the forward kinematics group is uh, kind of redundant. The colors is also redundant. The scale uh, kind of works, but we're not gonna kind of get into that on this one. I just really wanna look at the shape group and then these two length properties and the bone curvature and then the dynamics group which is here those are the main things we're going to use the three size properties they don't do anything with bones they just work with the tapers that come with the full version of limber so i can change the upper length and the lower length if i don't want my limb to be you know have the same length on each sort of section like that i'm just going to undo put this back to be 200 and then the bone curvature uh, this is kind of the fun one because as we increase that, you'll see that the path starts to get curved around the joint uh, and we get that kind of noodle sort of rubber hose style limb like this. The clockwise property will dictate which way that bend in the limb goes. So it's set to 100%, which makes it face in a clockwise direction. But if we crank that down and turn it the other way, then the limb will face to the left you probably want that on either 100 or a minus 100 rather than some other sort of figure. Uh, I'll set mine back to 100. And then the rotate start and rotate end properties are also keyframable, but again, you probably want those set to either zero or 100. So rotate end is the most useful one. And if I turn that up to 100, you'll see that the controller now faces the same direction as the end of the limb. And as I move it around, it's rotating, okay? So the start controller we can see here is not rotating and the end controller is changing rotation. So that's great because we can parent a foot to this now and that foot will then rotate along with the leg. Um, the stretch property uh, is best ignored when it comes to limber light because there are some uh, sort of incompatibilities with that. Again, you kind of want the full version of limber to make that work properly. But the anti-pop works just fine. We can turn that up to say 100 and then uh, let's turn the bone curvature down. So uh, the anti-pop just sort of smooths out kinks and pops in, in mostly in walk cycles. So if we're animating a walk cycle uh, and we get these kind of like uh, hits where the where the knee sort of pops to out or pops to completely straight uh, you, you know you can alleviate those by just turning up the anti-pop property I don't really need it on for this so I'm going to set it back to zero okay so that's it for the limber effect and how we can kind of deal with the dust sort of dynamic properties of the limb uh, I now want to show you how to actually change the appearance 
of the path and the stroke. So if I select this limb layer and twirl it down, and then twirl down the shape contents, and then this one called limb, we don't want to uh, don't want to deal with this one that's called admin. That's best left alone. But inside the limb group, you'll see the path and the stroke. And this stroke is just like any other shape layer stroke. We can change its uh, color like this, and we can change its width, and we could change the cap style, and we could add a taper. Okay, let's set it back to round cap to do that. And then the taper, if I change the end uh, length to 100, and then the end width to say 50, and then maybe dial up start width, you can see you get a nice uh, tapered stroke, and that obviously works fine. If I go select my end control, go back to the bone curvature property, turn that up, we can see that that's still gonna work just fine. Um, and you can actually, sometimes you might wanna even play with the wave. So if I uh, reset my taper and twirl that up, and in the wave, uh, obviously it goes a bit crazy to begin with, but that's uh, something we can uh, change. So if we change the units from pixels to cycles, change the cycle to one and change the phase to 180, uh, we can get this kind of like narrowing around the middle kind of thing. I mean, it's a bit extreme because the stroke width is so huge, but uh, if we had that narrower and maybe if we had that bone curvature up, you know, we can get this kind of like, I don't know, uh, sort of Mickey Mouse kind of cartoon style that's a bit thinner around the middle, looks a little bit more hand-drawn uh, and that can work quite nicely. So let's reset that wave and talk about adding strokes. So if we just wanted to add an outline to the whole thing, maybe you just want to make a black outline, we can just select this stroke and hit Command D, duplicate it, and then the one that comes below, we can just make a different color, let's say black, and increase that stroke width. And then we've got a really basic and quick and easy stroke around the whole thing. And that works just fine. But let's say we wanted to add another kind of whole stroke on top of this. So if I selected this limb group and then duplicated it with Command D or Control D, then in the upper one, I'm gonna uh, select this stroke here and change its color from pink to uh, yellow, like that, and then with this path selected, if I click on this fly out menu and add a trim paths and I dial down the end property, you can see how I can get two different colors on the same stroke. Maybe I'd want this top one to be uh, wider like that, but obviously that's gonna sort of bulge out uh, past the black one. So if I've increased that to, uh, let's say that was 120, then I would need that black one underneath to kind of go a bit wider as well to sort of match the other thing. That works quite nicely. And if we want everything to be kind of like rounded like this, that might be all we need. But often when you're doing things like this, you want one end of the uh, sort of top stroke to be rounded like this and the other end to be straight rather than rounded. And uh, let me just turn off the black strokes for now so it makes this a little bit easier to see. So if I were to change my uh, yellow stroke from a round cap to a butt cap, you know, I've got what I want at this end, but uh, I haven't got what I want at the other end. So the way to get around that is to duplicate the whole thing again and then set the new one to be a round cap and make it slightly shorter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select limb two, again, hit Command D to duplicate it, and then in limb three, I'm gonna take this trim path and bring it down to say 1% like that. And then I'm gonna set that stroke to be a round cap. And that's now gonna give me a little kind of circle. If I just turn off limb two, you'll see, it gives me a little kind of circle at the end there, which is what I need in order to kind of make it look like it's rounded at one end and square at the other. And that works quite well. And I can still uh, trim this one back quite a long way before that starts to sort of be a problem where that little round thing is. And I can obviously go as far as I want all the way down there. So we can get some kind of good looks like that. Uh, if we wanted to add an outline to this whole thing, uh, we can't really just sort of turn these back on 
because it's going to go a bit crazy. So let's delete those black strokes entirely. That was that one and that one. Uh, the simple way to add a stroke to everything like this is actually to just add a layer style. Okay. So with the limb layer selected, I can go layer, layer styles and stroke and then come down here and in my stroke inside my layer styles, I can set this to black, click OK, make it whatever size I want like that. And then that's a very fast, easy and reliable way to get an outline on a whole limb like that. In the next video in this series, we're gonna use Limberlite to add the limbs into a fully animated and finished character. So click the link to watch that one now. Otherwise, see you next time.